Andrew, what did you make of those changes, Andrew? Oh, look, I, I just think this Plibersec thing really stands out. I think it looks a bit petty. She, she was obviously seen as a leadership rival. She was excluded from the campaign. She's not even the number one environment minister, Chris Bowen is, so she can't mm. be happy. She had education, skills and training. She had skills and training taken off her in the last shadow cabinet reshuffle. She's a former deputy leader and she's someone who's very popular with Australians. So I, I just wouldn't have uh, done that to her. Having said that, Jason Clare, Minister for Education, uh, interesting appointment. This is a job that after the 2013 defeat, uh, uh, Peter, he said was his dream job. He, he actually said on Sky News, I'm reading here, I haven't got the grab, but uh, he says, I might be touted as leader, but I've no desire to do that job at all. My dream job one day would be to be the Minister for Education wow. because I know what that would mean for the community I represent. Education is the game changer here. It's what gives a boy from Cabramatta the opportunity to do a job like this. Now, of course, he went to Canley Vale High School and the first person in his family, apparently, to go past year 10, Peter. So hmm. uh, that is quite some story, Jason Clare. So he's had to make way for Tanya Plibersek. What's their relationship like? Well, she's had to make way for him. Yeah. Oh, well, different factions. That's just the way it is, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so so does, does Anthony... I mean, there's the old saying, you know, you, you keep your, your, your friends close, you keep your enemies closer. Is that, is that, should that have applied here? Well, in my view, it's always useful, at least uh, not to unnecessarily annoy them at the very least. You try to minimise violence in politics because mm. it can come back to bite you, Pete. Uh, but, uh, look, he's, he's rewarded all his friends, hasn't he? Murray Watts in the Cabinet. Uh, even in the Assistant Minister ranks, you've got Tim Ayres, you've got Jenny McAllister. So, yeah. uh, But that's, that's quite normal, but you just don't want to demote your enemies too, too much. Real side of things, we're hearing a few whispers, some murmurings, uh, particularly when it comes to the former Foreign Minister, Maurice Payne. Uh, what are you hearing on this front, Andrew? Well, you contacted me last night after you heard she might be retiring. I've had a senior Liberal tell me she's not retiring. However, your mail has uh, uh, some truth to it in the sense that people are angling in case she's retiring. Mm. So Dave Sharma has contacted Liberal power brokers to see if there's a place for him in the Senate should Maurice Payne retire. Who knows, she might retire, but maybe not for a year or two. And, of course, the Senate, it doesn't cause a by-election. But mm. Dave Sharma's being a bit hopeful here, I think, because apparently the feeling amongst the power brokers is you'd have to replace her with a woman if she were to depart. Right. There is, a, there is a feeling, though, that Dave, you know, he was a rising star of the party. Uh, he, he got the hospital pass from Scott Morrison and lost his seat. You know, do they make room for someone like that who has a long and, and pretty good future with the party? The problem they've got is there's not much room and there's not much room for blokes. I've only got uh, seven women in the House of Representatives. It's quite extraordinary. The mm. Liberals have seven women in the House of Representatives. Anthony Albanese has ten women in his cabinet. What a contrast. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. Andrew, appreciate that. Thank you.